Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So last night I just posted a video uh, talking about uh, my experience with Quiet Carry. You know, they were really gracious enough to uh, not only send me the parts that I ordered and paid for, but even gave me a brand uh, new Quiet Carry Q3. Uh, so go ahead and check out that video if you're interested to know what the Q3 is all about. But today I had some spare time. I, I don't work today, so I was able to install the new expansion post onto my old uh, quiet carry Q2, and uh, by expanding uh, the quiet carry, I was able to actually store more things in here, which I've been planning to do for a while, and was able to just kind of get my um, system a little bit organized. And I wanted to share that with you. So uh, this is the uh, quiet carry Q2, uh, not currently being sold uh, by quiet carry, as it's been replaced by the slightly uh, thinner uh, quiet carry Q3. Um, but basically the same principle. In essence, if you haven't seen my previous videos, you have these two pieces of metal, one here and one here. They kind of sandwich together and they're connected by uh, metal posts in the middle. And then inside those metal posts, you can attach different things like uh, keys, which this is what's intended for. And then for me, I found some loose Leatherman tools on eBay and kind of combined everything together into almost like a, a multi-tool, so to speak. So I uh, just wanted to share it with you. I'm not going to go over how I put this together. If you would like to know how to assemble this, uh, you can watch this video, but you can also watch uh, my old video from a few months back in which I showed you how to assemble uh, the quiet carry. But I will go over the materials that I did use for today. So anyways, here's an overview of the item. Okay, again, this is the quiet carry Q2 in the stone wash finish. Okay, and uh, you have here a built-in key ring. Attached to that, I put a smaller key ring, and then attached to these, I put uh, these Night Eyes uh, locking S-binders. Okay, now a locking S-binder uh, basically is like a carabiner, but uh, so easy to remove like that, but it also incorporates a lock in here, so that way you can't open it accidentally in your pocket. Okay, so a little bit added security. And then attached to the end of that, I have uh, a few tools. So I have my um, True Utility uh, Telepen. So it's in, in essence, it's a pen that uh, collapses onto itself. It does accept standard ink cartridges. So for me, I've, I've kind of gone the cheap way. I have so many spare Bic pens at home. So usually what I do is I'll just trim it and then put the, uh, the distal portion of that ink cartridge, like this one, inside the pen. All right, so... Uh, in essence, it does kind of accept standard ink cartridges. You just have to kind of cut them to length. So that's my pen. Uh, this is a lock for my uh, one wheel. So I carry a, um, a Woe 2. You can check a previous video on that too. It's a uh, collapsible lock and uh, this is the key for that. And then I also carry uh, this uh, Robivon Aurora A1 uh, flashlight. Okay. And I'll put the links for all these items in the uh, description below. So that's uh, one set. And then the other um, locking S binder that I carry, I just keep empty. Uh, the reason I do this is, you know, if I travel, let's say on vacation and I rent a car, I have something to a spare uh, care binder to attach my keys to. Uh, sometimes I have to bring my tires to my, you know, local dealership or repair shop to do work on it. So in before I leave my house, I will put my spare key onto here. And then when I get to that shop, I will go ahead and take this off and hand this to them rather than hand them this whole thing which has my car keys on it as well. So it just provides me a little bit of versatility to carry something extra uh, with me um, at all times and it's a relatively sm uh, small profile. Okay, uh, for the quiet carry, um, I chose to have the multi-tool option. So this is what the multi-tool looks like. You can choose to have this option or on the Q3, besides this, you can choose to have the blade option. So either or. Okay, I went for the multi-tool because I work in a hospital, so I can't have a, a blade, obviously. Uh, the multi-tool option is uh, thumb stud deployable. It does have a liner lock here. And you have a few tools built into it. So you have this flat head or chisel at the tip. You have a little bit of a jimping here for grip. Uh, package opener. You have this quarter, bit, uh, quarter inch uh, standard bit driver. So you'll just have to carry some bits to make this work. This also will work with the Leatherman half bits as well. And then you have a bottle opener here. 
Okay, so that's a look at the multi-tool option. Now, what I chose to do is you basically have two sides, right? You have a right side and a left side. So on my right side, I chose to put most of my keys. So on there, I have my car key. Now to make this fit, I had to use my valet key because obviously my main key has an alarm on it and it wouldn't be flat enough to store into here. For me, uh, you know, it's not that much of an inconvenience to lock things manually. So uh, it's, it's more convenient for me to keep things uh, in my, um, my quiet carry. So I chose to sacrifice convenience of an alarm for the convenience of putting it inside my quiet carry. I also carry my clutch lock. So a lot of people have asked me, what the heck is a clutch lock? Uh, in essence, it's almost like a long bar that goes underneath the clutch pedal. And then of course it locks with a key. And the whole idea there is if you don't know how to drive manual, you usually have to depress and push down on the clutch pedal in order to turn the ignition and for the car to start. Okay, so uh, this prevents that pedal from being pushed down unless it's unlocked. Then I carry a couple house keys, garage key. And so that'll take care of the right side. On the left side is where you have a couple other keys that I couldn't fit on the right side. So I do carry my uh, mailbox key here. I carry the key for, uh, I live in a uh, gated community. So this is the gate key for the front compound. So sometimes when I get home, I, I'll go out for groceries, but I'll take my uh, one wheel uh, electric board. So I don't use the main gate that the cars use. Uh, I use the side gate and this is the, what that key is for. Okay. And then I have my main tools here. Now these tools were all bought off of uh, eBay. So on eBay, you can find a bunch of used either old or broken Leathermans that still have functional tools built into it. And so essentially you can salvage parts of that and uh, use them to make your own system. And so that's what I did here. So I took the um, tweezers from a Leatherman Micra, the nail cleaner and nail file from a Leatherman Micra. From the Leatherman Wave, I took their micro driver. So uh, this does not accept quarter bits, obviously, but it does have this uh, double-ended Phillips and flathead micro driver. I use this primarily for adjusting my sunglasses or reading glasses. Okay, and then uh, really useful is this uh, pair of scissors here. So this one comes off of the Leatherman Wave. And the good thing about these scissors is they, you know, they obviously work. I'm able to cut, uh, but on top of that, uh, they're very quick to deploy and quick to close. So if you pull back on the spring here and let go, oops, it closes onto itself. So that way the sharp end is pointing down and then you can close that safely uh, without having to accidentally cut yourself if you're reaching in your pocket. Okay, so that's kind of a look uh, at most of the tools that I carry. Uh, some dimensions, oh yeah, and then on this side uh, from Amazon, I just ordered a generic adhesive ruler. I cut it to the size of this and uh, you know, it doesn't look pretty, but for me it's functional. You know, I just kind of put it over here so I can have a ruler both in centimeters and millimeters as well as inches on the top. Okay, and so some dimensions for you here. So in terms of length, you're looking at about 7.5 millimeters long. In terms of thickness, uh, excluding, you know, my car keys over here, just the quiet carry itself, you're looking at about 2.7 centimeters. And then in terms of thickness, this is pretty beefy because I uh, not only have the standard posts that come with the quiet carry q2 but i am incorporating additional posts uh, that they sent me so this is pretty thick and it's about 2.5 centimeters thick okay so um you know so far i haven't really had a chance to use this around town i will tell you uh, it does you know weigh you know it has a good amount of weight to it um i would say probably feels about 75% of the weight of a Leatherman Surge. Um, not everyone's going to know what that means. I don't have a scale, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so kind of hard to gauge. Uh, a really decently sized orange, you know, like a plump orange that you would pick up in the grocery, I would say that's about the weight of this. So not too heavy, definitely not too light. 
Um, but for me, it has almost everything I would need on a day-to-day -day basis in one compact package. Uh, number two, it's TSA friendly, at least in my experience, flying multiple different airlines, going international. I've never, ever had a problem with this going through security. I always flare out the tools and the keys and present it to the agent ahead of time so they know what to expect. Um, but I've never had an issue traveling with this. So uh, compact, um, carries everything I need. It's modular. So let's say, you know, down the road, I decide to add or remove a, a different tool from either the key ring side or the quiet carry side. I have that flexibility to do so. Okay. And inside the pocket, because I'm using these Night Eyes uh, S binders, you can see that the way it rides in the pocket is, is more about length than about width. So it's relatively slim. And so what that means is with the pocket clip, if you kind of clip this towards the back of your pocket, the front side of that same pocket, you can have a little bit more room to reach your hand in in case you're keeping anything else inside. You know, of course, that'll depend on the kind of pants or shorts you use. But in my experience, uh, that's the benefit of doing this system is everything is long, but you're just occupying one side of the pocket rather than having it side by side and really preventing you from um, storing things in the deeper portion of the pockets. Okay, so anyways, uh, oh yeah, let's talk about uh, washers. So besides the hardware that comes with the Quiet Carry and the expansion post which they sent me, I'm also using these washers which I picked up from Lowe's. Now I don't have the exact uh, measurement of these washers, but I'll take one here. These are nylon washers. You can get this in the hardware tray section of Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I think usually these are under the automotive section for the bins but you can just look for nylon washers or specialty washers. Now these washers, uh, let's do an inner diameter and outer diameter measurement in millimeters. So inner diameter, you're looking at about five millimeters. Okay, let's, can I zoom in a little bit more? Yep, inner diameter about five millimeters, outer diameter, you're looking at about one millimeter. Okay, so look for that inner diameter of 0.5, of five millimeters, outer diameter of 10 millimeters. That's the kind of washers you want. And so what I did with these washers, you can see here, is you, you know, it's obviously nice to have washers in between keys and tools because then you can remove one tool easily without having to remove too many of the others next to it. So you can see I have some of them here mixed in with my tools, and then I have some of them here uh, mixed in with my keys. Okay. Um, other things I would recommend you do, uh, Quiet Carry usually does supply Loctite to its fasteners. Um, if you are in the habit of constantly playing around with your uh, Quiet Carry, which means you are removing these fasteners over and over again, I would suggest that every time you assemble it again, apply a little bit of Loctite. Um, I don't know which Loctite is recommended for metal to metal because there is a specific Loctite uh, for that. So it's either Loctite red or Loctite blue. You'll have to do some research, but very important to apply a little bit of Loctite uh, to these fasteners. Number one, it's for the keys. It'll obviously prevent um, these uh, fasteners from pre-loosening on their own. The most important for me was the pocket clip. I, I actually lost my pocket clip after I flew on a plane, landed uh, in the airport in Vegas, walked to my car in the parking lot and I realized that I no longer had a pocket clip, which means it, it, it fell out somewhere. And I know it was because I did not tighten this uh, tight enough uh, the previous night when I was playing around with it. And had I put Loctite on there, I'm sure that would have prevented this uh, fastener from removing and this uh, pocket clip from you know falling out of my pocket, so to speak. So that's what I would recommend um, uh, carrying with you or applying to the fasteners before you reassemble. Uh, besides the Loctite, Quiet Carry does try to make uh, these two fasteners relatively um, secure uh, just by design. So I'm going to take a spare one of those here and I'll try to focus up so you can see. Okay, so what's unique about this, this looks like just any standard fastener that you would get, but if I flip it over, you'll notice that there are these little like detents or not detents, these little projections. Okay, in the uh, in the fastener. Let me see if I can get a side profile so you can see that. Okay, you kind of see how it's almost like half a ball bearing poking out. Uh, what happens is those little projections 
uh, match little uh, detents inside of the housing where uh, these fasteners go. So if I remove this fastener and expose the hole underneath, inside the hole you would see very small holes spread out in a perimeter like this. So there would be a depression inside of this hole and then inside those depressions go those little projections on the fastener here. So it's almost like a self-locking system. But I think adding a little bit of Loctite just adds a little more security to that as well. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today. Uh, let's go ahead and spread this out for you one more time so you can kind of see uh, everything here. Oh, while I'm doing this, one thing I will tell you, though, is I was almost not allowed. Uh, I visited Nashville uh, a month ago for my brother's bachelor party, and we attended a uh, Predators hockey game. They almost did not allow me into the arena because they were worried that uh, this resembled too much of a knife, right? I can get it. You know, I understand why somebody would think that. Um, obviously, if somebody took the time to really inspect this, they would see that the blade portion is really recessed. I mean, there's no way you can do any harm to anybody. The scissors are probably more deadly than this, but it still gives the impression of a blade, especially the fact that you flick it out like a knife. So just be careful where you go. Even airport security, I've gotten lucky so far, but you know, just be careful where you go that they might not allow you because of uh, this multi-tool option, depending on how you present it to them and just depending on the, uh, you know, how strict the person looking at it is. All right, so anyways, this is everything. Let's see if I can expose those scissors there. There we go. And we'll pull these to the bottom over here. All right, so that's a look at everything there. So quite a lot in a relatively compact package. Pretty, pretty happy with it. All right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Any comments, questions, uh, suggestions, please put them down below. And as always, have fun, and I'll see you guys on the next one.